So for today's video, we are going to talk about a very important topic, and I just wanted to let you know that this could be very triggering for some people, uh, including myself. So just be aware that viewer discretion is advised. I was sold as a sex slave when I was five years old. I didn't really understand what sex was. I had been raped before by my dad, and then eventually at five I was sold by my dad. But deep down inside I think I knew something was wrong, and I was always, always, always afraid. Today I am here with Senator Capri Cafaro, and we are going to talk a little bit more about this issue, why it matters to us personally, and about the statistics, because as humans this is our obligation to give a voice to the voiceless, and this is really happening in our backyard. How did you get involved with this cause, why does this matter personally to you, and why is this such an epidemic that we need to address? Before I was in office I was not you know, aware that human trafficking was indeed an epidemic domestically. One thing that I think that we really do need to work towards, and, and one of the reasons why, you know, Beauty for Freedom, I think, is so wonderful is, you know, a lot of people don't realize, as we were discussing, that this is in our backyard. That, yes, it is, it is something that is, you know, globally pervasive, sex trafficking, labor trafficking, and the like. I was really, really excited to join the organization as an ambassador because Beauty for Freedom is one of the most uh, you know, I think forward-thinking, forward-looking, progressive organizations when it comes to both raising awareness um, regarding the basically slavery um, uh, and trafficking in, in persons, and uh, making our these victims into survivors, empowering them through through art, um, and and giving them an outlet. At the end of the day, we do need to make further investments in an actual treatment uh, to be able to get survivors. Um, where they need to be. As lawmakers and as citizens, what can we do? Because this is such a prevalent issue, but at the same time, just as one citizen, sometimes we feel hopeless in it's a lot so of true. these issues. To speak personally on my experience and my relation to this, mm -hmm. which I've never really done before, I had a friend in high school who, you know, 16 years old, yeah. wants to be loved, needs money. Right. She willingly put herself into a situation like that. And being a caring person, I was trying to help her and make sure she was safe and I was put in some very dangerous situations. I can believe it. We ended up losing contact and she ended up really getting into this stuff deep and I really haven't spoken to her since. I don't know where she is or what she's doing. I know that drugs were a huge part of that. Yep. Things outside Typically of her are. will and it's, you know, she, this is all happening in our backyard. And it happens differently for everyone. I know that some people it's a childhood thing that they're born into. For some people, you know, it's being kidnapped. Uh, off the streets and for some people it's just looking for love in the wrong places and That's getting right. messed up. As citizens, you are advocates. We, as lawmakers, work for you. We have to answer to the voters, to the people, whether you vote or not, frankly. As someone who's dealt with various life issues myself, I can personally attest to how healing art therapy can be. And like I said, there are people in my life who I have gone through a lot of healing and therapy with and using beauty and using art is extraordinarily transformative. Beauty for Freedom is a nonprofit organization that is aimed at helping survivors at abolishing this trafficking completely and providing resources, including therapy, to those in need. And again, that reaches globally to places like India and Cambodia, as well as here domestically in the United States. I'm really honored. I'm actually going to be at BeautyCon with them. They have a I Want to Break Free campaign that you can support, you can donate, you can talk about. If you have a story to share, you can, or if there's someone else's story that impacts you. Again, it's about raising that awareness. It is our human obligation to give a voice to the voiceless. So whether that's helping to volunteer, making a monetary donation, speaking about what matters to you, sharing or retweeting something that means something to you, or just making that phone call when you see something suspicious. Every little thing can make a huge difference in someone else's life and could be the difference between life or lack thereof. To those who don't know much about human trafficking or find it hard to understand, I think I would just say take the time to learn about it. I think you're able to enter into a very compassionate and loving and non-judgmental frame of mind. I think as an advocate, success would be 
for me, just helping people be themselves again. Giving them opportunities so that they don't go back to that, but that they just have a curiosity and a strong desire to be free, to be themselves, to explore, to learn, and to always improve and not be held back anymore by their past or by the abuse.